I think there's something special about South Africa. Being successful when you've got all odds against you means that much more. I love it when people say you can't do something and I love proving someone wrong. I certainly wouldn't want to compete against people like that. Wow, my ultimate dream. <laughs> wow. Is to see the kids that I've coached, you know? See them excel. One person cannot make the boat go fast. It's about having the whole team driving in one direction and just really being right on the nail all the time. It's about coming back the next day, training harder, getting back, racing again, fighting, put myself out there in a vulnerable state and still coming out to be the best I can be. I believe that athletes have the most courage because they're the ones putting their bodies on the line and I hope they love what they do. I have more love and passion for the sport than necessarily the courage part. But they both go hand in hand, which makes sure you don't ever fall off the train. I remember grade eight, so I'd actually just started rowing. And this was the same year, the 2012 London Olympics. I remember sitting upstairs in my dormitory and all of a sudden they're screaming downstairs in the common room, everyone's going crazy. And one of our old boys, John Smith, was actually racing his Olympic final. To see that lightweight fall bring the Olympic gold, then it was sort of like, I just remember watching the race being like, wow, huh, South Africa's, we good at this. Yeah, no, Tubbs is, uh, I think he's a bit of a different cat. Um, he's quite quirky and he's got his own uh, things going, but yeah, he's a solid guy. I think he's, you know, in it for the long run and I think you can trust him to, to put his best out on the, on the water every day for as long as it takes. I saw him as a junior and I thought this guy has got something. He is ginormous. And I knew nothing about him when he came into the senior system. And I saw him race and he put up some really gutsy performances. I think really showed to us what he was capable of. He certainly got the, the physiological and the mental stature to, to do this game. He's now in the difficult position of establishing himself as an under 23 athlete and then seeing how can he make this big step from under 23 being a 19, 20 year old into the big league. It's really about maturity and how he grows as a person um, to get that racing up to a better level. With rowing, there's so many different aspects to it. There's the physical element, there's the mental element, there's a technical element. It wasn't just about getting as fast as possible. You also really had to think about your stroke. It's quite a complex sport, which makes it challenging. And I really like a challenge. Oh, Kirsten is tough. I would say tough is, is the number one, or, or like ruthless, you know, the way she trains. You like to push your body hard, feel pain, go to places that you didn't think you could. Kirsten's traveled a long journey. I mean, I first took her to Beijing in 2008. She was one year out of school. She was one of our most successful juniors. She came fifth of the Junior World Championships. And I think she got thrown in the deep end. We didn't have a lot of depth at that stage. And she achieved 13th place in Beijing, which was great for a girl who had just come out of school. 2016 in the Olympic year was a particularly challenging year. We won our heat and our semi, and then we raced our final. And the bottom line was we just weren't good enough and we ended fifth. That was really hard to accept and it took a lot of work mentally to get through that. There's no doubt that when you're going through a rough patch or a really hard session or you're really tired and you've got to get through race pieces, 
you've got that big goal of an Olympic medal, Olympic gold medal. I don't think I'd be here if I wasn't striving for an Olympic gold. Since um, 2004, where Donovan Chick and Ramon de Clemente won a bronze medal, put us on the map. And South Africa take the bronze. And we've always managed from that medal to just keep jumping up. And I think um, in London, certainly put us bigger on the map. We had Cizwe and Glovel, the first black um, rower to win Olympic gold in the world. An incredible win for South Africa. That said, Aki belief is there. We can do something here. Then Rio came along and we had five A finals. What a performance by Britain and Keeling. I think once again it showed people involved in sport in South Africa that we actually can punch way above our weight. Well, honestly speaking, the majority of our kids don't come from very good backgrounds. But at the same time, we usually don't base it around where you come from but it's a matter of when you're here, how do you choose to change your situation? We don't have the best of equipment, but we try to make the best of with, with what we have. Which we need to have these philosophies in a country where we don't get a lot of support. Nice and easy. Jump through the bike too, please. To go into to Europe and into race uh, countries that have 10 times the money we have and you know 10 times the athletes that we have and then be able to, to dish it up and, and beat them always feels amazing. Imagine getting on the water with your old John Wall and then you're racing against somebody who's in a Felipe or a Hudson and then winning against them. Yeah, I mean, we always get encouraged to be better to row better, to be stronger, push harder. But it's all done in a really positive, uplifting way. Can't come out here and, and train in a silver medal position. We have to train at the gold standard all the time. So Roger's the one that keeps everyone honest and everyone on the limit and making sure that we, we are doing everything that we can be doing to, to get there. And it's a light knee pop. Ready? Go! Roger is so committed to South African rowing and he's fought for athletes to give them support so that we can put ourselves in the world front. And then it came out that rowing Australia, they wanted him in terms of job opportunities, it was something you couldn't say no to. And he turned it down because he said he wants to work with South Africa. Just shows exactly where his priorities and his commitments and his allegiance lie and that's pretty epic as an athlete to see that. Keep horizontal, Lauren, keep horizontal. I think the thing that defines Lawrence the most is, um, is his determination and willingness to succeed. With Lawrence, there's only one standard, and that's a gold standard. There's no nonsense with him. There's no excuses. There's no, yeah, but this happened or that happened. He just is ruthless in what is expected and hitting expectations. In 2014, Lawrence wasn't in the top boat. We started noticing his performances weren't up to scratch. And then I got told, no, okay, we, we need to go do some tests. And then like a week later, I was, went from training to starting chemo. So it was just this like, the whole world just completely shifts. He wasn't fighting now to be in the top boat of rowing. He was fighting for his life. Almost every week post the whole recovery scenario from cancer, he was getting better and better. So I put him with a very strong partner, Sean Keeling, and they really clicked it off. Often Sean would say, we're only rowing this distance, and Lawrence would say, we're doing more, and Sean would have to stick his oar in the water and say, no more, they would have a big fight. Um, but Lawrence's character was just more, 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 I can just churn it and eat it up. Um, and I think that's what really led them to Rio. Yeah, and it was only like 18 months from uh 
finishing the chemo to racing at the Olympics. They were lying in fifth going through the 1,000 metre mark. Lawrence called to Sean and said, our water, and the momentum changed to our side. And it almost, as you watch the race unfold, you can just see all the hardship and times that both these athletes have gone through. Momentum was on their bar ball, and you could just see their boat slowly gathering, rowing through Australia, rowing through Italy, and getting onto the British, and then that's where we were gonna be. And when you watch it, how momentum can change in life, and how they changed a negative, where they were behind the curve, and then put momentum on their bar ball and got in front of the curve. It was just like this magic story of like going from the lowest points to just living the dream at the end. So now we're a few months out from the games. We're training up in Lesotho. It's now when we start getting to the Olympic Games and you know, South African athletes want to do well there. And that's where the resilience and what they've gone through hopefully comes through. The call comes down to Roger and the coaching team and they will sit down and discuss who they think is going to make the boat the fastest. And you know, rowing, you don't have contact with your opposition. You don't have a say in how their race is going to go. You only have a say in what your race is going to be. And and that's the same as a lot of challenges we face, you know, we've got to take it on yourself. cancellation of the qualification regattas is very much a determination of what's happening with the Olympic Games. So I've been in contact with Peter this morning, I've been in contact with Gianni, and I've been in contact with the Canadian team. And no one has any answers. The big answer that they're waiting for is, is the Olympics going to be cancelled or will it be postponed? That is the one thing that everybody is waiting for. So I need to make a decision today of whether we do stay up in Lesotho or we go home. Does anyone have any opinions or want to voice anything? I'll go with no news yet, so we must carry on as usual. Anything else? Cool. Let's go. Right. It's out of our control. I can only control what I'm doing, which is training. I mean, I can't be worrying about other things. I can just focus on what I'm doing now, and I can put resilience into practice. Everyone's going to take the news a bit differently and I think if you can block it all out and stay focused on the goal, those are the people that are, are going to do well at the end of the day. I think we're in an advantaged position here. We're sitting in the, in the mountains in Lesotho and don't have any corona here and right now we can train. So let's do all the training, train as best as we can and, and just adapt and adjust to the, the environment as it changes. One theme you'll find throughout all the South African crews is that there's the sense of whatever our circumstance, we need to rise above it. And I think courage is not letting anything limit you. It's rising above all the time. You're doing it because you love it and you're driven and you're passionate to get results and achieve goals. So it's coming quite deep within, which I think is what makes rowing in South Africa so special, is that you really have an unbelievably determined group of athletes. It's like a family, the whole rowing South Africa. It's not just one rowing elite squad, it's a whole system that like, if I think of all the people who've just influenced me, without each of them, then I lose something along the way. And I think constantly that's what makes rowing so special. As a coach, I feel like I'm also making a contribution. Get kids off the streets and put them in boats, put bums on seats. What are you asking these kids to do it's hard, it's tough, and it hurts. It's the younger generation are the future, and I mean, it starts by 
you know, grooming one kid, making them better, that one kid will groom the other kid. I think that could change the country. You have so much hidden talent in South Africa, so we're really great to widen the pool to see more people try rowing and get involved with rowing. If you build the base a little bit bigger at the school age, then I definitely think we'll see better results at the top age and be competitive in more fields. We need hope, and I'm hoping that rowing with the community we have, we can certainly put that hope on the map and deliver world-class performances.